presented on high definition 3D digital screens that stand more than 40 feet tall and more than 180 feet in length or about 13 meters tall and 55 meters long with the metric system. Utilizing some of the most advanced technology that is available anyway in filmmaking today. The film was designed and created by director Peter Jackson and the filmmakers from Weta Digital out of New Zealand. The filmmakers from Weta have won set, uh, seven, now actually, seven Academy Awards. They've worked on films like Avatar, The Lord of the Rings trilogy, the new Avatar movie as well, the multiple Avengers movies, um, the Planet of the Apes film, the most recent ones, and the upcoming Planet of the Apes movie, and of course, the Hulk. Now, you can take those glasses off. You don't have to keep wearing them, but just keep them handy. You will need them again towards the end of the tour. I'll tell you when to put them on when the time comes. Some of you might have been here years ago, and you might remember that there was an older version of King Kong that was here for a long, long time. It's right down the hill over there, right about where that big corrugated metal wall is. That was a large robotic King Kong, a large mechanical effect. Uh, when that was lost in a fire back in 2008 and they made the decision to replace it, they did the same thing that is done in a lot of film and TV production these days. They took things that used to be done with complicated mechanical effects, did them instead with advanced digital effects like you saw there today. There are 16 high-powered digital projectors in there. Each one's about the size of a refrigerator, bringing King Kong 360 3D roaring to life. You don't find too many attractions like that designed and created by multiple Academy Award-winning special effects teams. Have your own cameras fired up. Looking over to your left, you're going to get a nice look at some very recognizable big-screen icons. The vehicles on the left are often referred to as picture cars. A picture car, basically, is any vehicle on set that ends up in the shot that is seen by the camera. A lot of times, people don't realize that when you see a really cool car in a TV show or a movie, they almost always have multiple versions of what looks like it's all one car. Great example, the uh, Ford Anglia that you see there from the Harry Potter movie. That's one of 17 different versions they used of the Weasley family flying car. And then the gyrosphere from Jurassic World, also seen in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, the second one of those movies. If you saw either one of those films, you notice that there's something missing from that gyrosphere. The sphere, the big glass ball around the outside. The glass ball never really existed. It was digital imagery. If they really closed that gyrosphere in a big plexiglass ball, they could have done that easily enough. But then... No matter where they would have tried to position the lights, the camera, the crew, the equipment, somewhere it would have all been reflected in the surface of a glass ball. It was easier, believe it or not, to create the illusion of a glass ball just using computers and digital imagery in post-production. But speaking of Jurassic Park and Jurassic World... Welcome to Jurassic Park. Yes, Wesley Gump Jurassic Park. Probably sounds better when Sir Richard Attenborough says it, I know. But the set pieces, the props, the picture cars around here were all used in the three Jurassic Park movies. Uh, this big mobile lab on your left is the vehicle that's on your screens right now in this clip from the Lost World Jurassic Park. You'll see it getting pushed over the edge of a cliff by an angry dinosaur. The cliff that's getting pushed over the edge of is really a parking structure on the front lot. Dressed up to look like a cliff in the jungle. Wait, do I... what happened? Sorry, I missed something. What's going on there? Oh, look, 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 just about anything you're going to see on screen these days. It's amazing how much of what you see on screen does not exist anywhere except inside of a computer. CGI, computer generated imagery, has revolutionized the filmmaking process. But one of the things that is still hard to digitally over is rain, especially rain that is hitting the actors. In their hair, wrench, clothes, wrench, they can do that digitally. They can do anything digitally. 
but it takes a very long time to create digital rain. So whenever possible, is, as you're seeing here, they prefer to create rain as a practical effect. Now, a practical effect is something that you're really going to create on set and just film it in real time with the camera. We're showing you now exactly how to make that happen. With a sharp eye, you can see the rain coming from the overhead sprinkler system. That's how they do it. That's that easy. Even in this day and age, sometimes the best special effects are still the simplest special effects. Now, the rain's not coming down everywhere. You don't want it to come down everywhere. You need to have some space in between where the rain's coming down. But you have some place to position the electronics. The oh, oh, we got to flood back there. We got to back Look out now. Take a look at your screen. You'll see that set in action. It's Big Fat Liar with Paul Giamatti, Frankie Muniz, and a man to buy. You can't run the wolf, kid! I think you're supposed to do that. Oh, he wished he was on the train. Of course, all of that water does get recycled. Uh, after it leaves there, they send it back up to the park. Uh, they use it to make all the hot dogs up in the park. Better than a lot, old Mexico. Might have been seen, might have seen in things like Balls of Fury with Christopher Walken. The Jack Black comedy, Nacho Libre. Uh, which is not long ago on the HBO series, Westworld is the town of Pariah. Right now, we're in the Old West. Our Western Street has been used almost to, uh, an entire episode of the new Quantum Leap uh, filmed out here earlier this season. And they were back here just about a week ago working on an upcoming episode of the new Quantum Leap. So they've filmed out here multiple times now. Uh, this area was seen in one of the biggest movies of, of the last several years that you might have seen. Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Brad Pitt, Leonardo DiCaprio, Margot Robbie. About 30 to 45 minutes worth of that movie shot right here. Some other things over the years.